Welcome to another session of the MedTech Lounge where we tackle different topics and discussions regarding the medical technology profession. The medical technology profession continues to develop over the years. Nowadays, the science of medical technology has evolved tremendously because of the development of modern equipment and new procedures aimed at helping in the diagnosis and treatment of diseases. So let us now define the practice of medical technology or otherwise known as a clinical laboratory science profession. At the end of this learning session, the students should be able to discuss the practice of medical technology focusing on the nature of the profession in relation to the detection and diagnosis of diseases. And we will also be able to differentiate medical technologists from other laboratory personnel such as laboratory technicians, pathologists, and the like. If we want to define the nature of medical technology, it is important to understand the connection between science and technology. When we say science, it is usually a systematic enterprise that builds and organizes knowledge in the form of testable explanations and predictions about the social world, even the universe. Disciplines in the sciences constantly evolve to adapt to the changing needs of the human beings. To review us of our basic science, remember that the father of modern science is who? Galileo Galilei. Yes. Technology, on the other hand, is the application of science in ways that are considered beneficial to our society. Technology can be defined in three ways. First, as a physical artifact, machine, or an instrument. Second, as an activity or a means to accomplish a goal. And third, as a knowledge. To simplify what I have just said, write this down. The definition of technology is science or knowledge that is put into practical use to solve problems or invent useful tools. To sum it up, Technology is an avenue for humans to alter or modify the environment in order to extend their abilities to create, intent, discover, or innovate to make the world a better place to live in. Medical technology is designed to improve the detection, diagnosis, treatment, and monitoring of diseases. It is also defined as the application of science to develop solutions to help problems or issues such as the prevention or delay of onset of diseases or the promotion and monitoring of good health. Clinical laboratory testing plays a crucial role in the detection, diagnosis, and treatment of diseases. Clinical laboratory scientists, or otherwise known as medical technologists, who perform most of these laboratory tests are involved in the examination and analysis of body fluids, tissues, and cells. Laboratory scientists usually look for the presence of bacteria, parasites, and other microorganisms in the body. They analyze the chemical contents of fluids, match blood for transfusions, and test for drug levels in the blood to show a patient's response to a specific treatment. They also prepare specimens for examinations to count cells and look for abnormal cells in the blood and other body fluids. They use microscopes, cell counters, and other sophisticated laboratory equipment. They also use automated equipment and computerized instruments capable of performing a number of tests simultaneously. After testing and examining a specimen, laboratory scientists analyze the results and relay them to physicians. According to Anna P. Fagelson, medical technology is a branch of medicine concerned with the performance of laboratory determinations and analysis used in the diagnosis and treatment of the disease and in maintenance of health. Ruth Heinemann said, medical technology is the application of principles of natural, 
physical and biological sciences to the performance of laboratory procedures which aid in the diagnosis and treatment of diseases. According to John M. Clerk, Medical technology is a profession concerned with providing information based on the performance of analytical tests on human body substances to detect evidence of or prevent disease or impairment and to promote and monitor good health. To Norma J. Walters, Medical technology is a health profession concerned with performing laboratory analysis in view of obtaining information necessary in the diagnosis and treatment of disease as well as the maintenance of good health. So in general, basing from the definitions given by the other four, medical technology focuses on the diagnosis and the treatment of the disease and of course to maintain good health. In the Philippines, the medical technology profession and its practice is governed and defined in Section 2 of the Republic Act 5527, also known as the Medical Technology Act of 1969. According to this RA, the definition of a medical technology is that it is an auxiliary branch of laboratory medicine which deals with the examination by various chemical, microscopic, bacteriologic, and other medical laboratory procedures or technique which will aid physician in the diagnosis, study, and treatment of disease, and in the promotion of health in general. Basing from RA 5527's Medical Technology Act of 1969, Section 2 states that in practicing medical technology, a person shall be deemed to be in the practice of medical technology within the meaning of this act who shall for a fee, salary, or other compensation or reward paid or given directly or indirectly through another renders any of the following professional services for the purpose of aiding the physician in the diagnosis, study, and treatment of diseases and in the promotion of health in general. So what does a medical technologist do inside the laboratory? Number one, examination of tissues, secretions, and excretions of the human body and body fluids by various electronic, chemical, microscopic, bacteriologic, hematologic, serologic, immunologic, nuclear, and other laboratory procedures and techniques, either manual or automated. We also do blood banking procedures and techniques, parasitologic, mycologic, and microbiologic procedures. We also do histopathologic and cytotechnology, provided that nothing in this paragraph shall inhibit a duly registered medical laboratory technician from performing histopathologic techniques and procedures. Clinical research involving patients or human beings requiring the use of and or application of medical technology knowledge and procedures. We also do preparations and standardization of reagents, standards, stains, and others provided such reagents, standards, and stains, and others are exclusively for the use of their laboratory. Medical technologists also perform clinical laboratory quality control, and lastly, the collection and preservation of specimens. For the information of all, here are the different practices of a medical technologist inside the laboratory. So kindly take a screenshot of this or you may write this down. A medical technologist must first become licensed before he or she is permitted to practice the profession. Practicing as a medical technologist without a license is punishable by law. It should also be considered that the medical technology practice should be bound by the accepted pledge of oath in accordance with the Code of Ethics of Medical Technology which states that the medical technology professional should accept the responsibilities inherent to being a professional 
and shall not engage in any illegal activities. The following are the original and revised versions of the Medical Technology Code of Ethics. But for the information of all, I would only want you to memorize the revised version of the MedTech Code of Ethics. You can download the Board of Medical Technology Code of Ethics in the prc.gov.ph. While taking the oath, one must stand upright with palms facing outward, one hand on the chest. While you may also do this position, stand upright, palms facing out, and arms on the side. Once again, kindly download this from www.prc.gov.ph and memorize the Medical Technology Code of Ethics. Let's now proceed to the synonyms of medical technology. Around the world, it is expected that there are different names that can exist which refers to the practice of medical technology. That would include countries, states, and professional organizations using different terms that still denotes the same thing or field or activity. India is a good example of a country that uses the term medical laboratory technology. Educational institutions in India offers Bachelor in Medical Laboratory Technology, which is a three-year degree. And for students who wish to pursue a career in the field of medical technology. In our country, the Philippines, Philippine educational institutions have started adopting this term to name the course offering for medical technology, that is, medical laboratory science. This started with the release of CHED Memorandum Order Number 14, Series of 2005, which revised the medical technology curriculum. In Australia, professionals working in the clinical laboratory are referred to as medical laboratory scientists. In the United States, the state of California offers a clinical laboratory science certification for laboratory practitioners. Aside from the American medical technologists, Another professional organization for practitioners in the laboratory also exists by the name American Society for Clinical Laboratory Science, or ASCLS. Biomedical scientists are also the term used commonly in European countries such as the United Kingdom, Germany, Italy, and Belgium. The European Association of Professionals in Biomedical Science, which fosters cooperation among its member societies in an international non-profit organization of European Societies of Laboratory Professionals. Another topic that we have to dwell with in defining the practice of the medical technology profession are the roles and responsibilities of medical technology professionals. Medical technology is indeed a rapidly advancing discipline and profession. The role of medical technology professionals in the diagnosis and treatment of diseases is very crucial in healthcare practice. Since this is timely, the pandemic has made use of medical technology practice in swabbing and also in defining and giving confirmation if the patient is COVID-19 positive or not. It states in the Philippine Republic Act 5527 or the Medical Technology Act of 1969 the, the scope of work of the different medical technology professionals. There is no doubt that the role of the medtechs is to collaborate with other healthcare practitioners to provide humane and dignified health service. Number one role of a medtech is to perform clinical laboratory testing. They must be capable of performing the most basic to the most advanced laboratory test. When we say basic, those CBC, urinalysis, stool examinations, those are basic tests done by medical technologists. For advanced testing, 
Those tests that require special training such as lupus panel and G6PD testing. Even the troubleshooting of our instrumentation in the laboratory is also part of our job as a medical technologist. Since I work in a tertiary laboratory, I was exposed in the advanced technologies and instrumentations in the lab. So I am a bit knowledgeable with the machines used to run chemistry tests, hematologic tests, serologic tests, even clinical microscopic tests. A graduate of BSMT or BSMLS is expected to show competency in performing routine laboratory tests that includes hematologic, microbiologic, serologic, and even chemical and other procedures in the different areas of laboratory science. In turn, it is also expected that the clinical laboratory will be equipped with the resources necessary for performing such procedures or any kind of laboratory testing. Medtechs are also expected to perform special procedures in diagnosing diseases. In this time of the pandemic, medtechs are being trained to operate advanced diagnostic equipment, especially for molecular and nuclear diagnostics such as RT-PCRs and other molecular biology techniques and procedures. So in performing different procedures to diagnose diseases, a medical technologist should always be conscious of the accuracy and precision of both the testing process and its results. Accuracy and precision impacts the interpretation of results by the physician to provide proper medication in the treatment of diseases. Let's define accuracy. It is a degree to which the result of a measurement conforms to the correct or true value. Let's make use of a dartboard as an example. When you say accurate, it is the moment that you hit the bull's eye of this dartboard. When we say precision, it is the closeness of the data or two or more measurements to one another. So in this dart board, we have three dart pins. As you can see there, that they are close to one another inside the bull's eye. So we call it precision when all these three data or all these three dart pins are close to one another. Okay, let's practice. When we say high accuracy, high precision, that means we hit the bull's eye and at the same time, all the other data or all the other dart pins are on that bull's eye. So your result has high accuracy and high precision. The other example is low accuracy but high precision. This usually happens when there's a problem with your control, probably expired control that you're using. So the control won't hit the target value of the patient's result. But when you retest it again and again, it somehow gives the same values. That's why it has high accuracy. I mean, high precision. Next is high accuracy, but low precision. This means that you hit the target but the results have different values so the data is not close to one another this happens when there is a fluctuation of the electricity that runs through our machines in the laboratory next is low accuracy at the same time low precision I think it is explainable from the photo here that you did not hit the right target and you don't have closer values. That's why it has low accuracy and precision. This other responsibility as a med tech is very crucial since honesty is still the best policy. A practicing medical technologist, like any other professional, is expected to be honest in the practice of his or her work. It is important that a medical technologist values honesty, particularly in conveying or reporting the results of any laboratory procedure. He or she should act according to the medical technology profession's code of ethics and his or her pledge oath of practice. 
A medical technologist must be honest at all times in the conduct of test procedures to come up with accurate and precise results. Even if he or she is your friend and the results, let's say for example, is positive for HIV. This one is a bit confidential but then please don't alter the results just because he or she is your friend. This will help him get diagnosed fast and earlier and get the treatment right after and to protect also other people from contracting this very sensitive virus. In collaborating with other healthcare practitioners, a medical technologist must be aware of the urgency of delivering results on time, especially in cases that require urgent treatment. There are times when physicians will request laboratory tests which require immediate action. One should take note on STAT or even observe the source of the request, like example from the emergency room or from the operating room. It is important for a medical technologist to be alert to fully address the needs of the patient. Since some laboratory procedures are time-bound, it is important that a medical technologist is able to perform the duties required of him or her as soon as possible. Let's say, for example, in the emergency room, there is a motovehicular patient that is admitted. Usual scenario, physicians would require tests like CBC to check if there is bleeding that is happening in the body of the patient, chemistry test. Also, blood typing if ever eventually the patient needs blood transfusion. So, we have to also check the blood type. And if ever we get the blood type of the patient already, sometimes the doctors order blood for transfusion. So, we do cross-matching. So, those are the usual scenarios in the hospital that happens almost every day and requires immediate attention and urgency from the medical technologist, so that the other healthcare providers can give the diagnosis and give proper treatment to the patient. Another one is to always demonstrate professionalism. A medical technologist must be able to perform his or her functions according to the professional code of ethics for medical technology professionals. He or she should be aware of the laws and regulations governing the practice of medical technology and should not exploit its function beyond its boundaries. In the Philippines, the practice of medical technology profession is governed by RA5527 or the Philippine Medical Technology Act of 1969. Other governing regulations are supplemented by the Clinical Laboratory Act of 1966 and the Blood Banking Acts of 1956 and 1995. National organizations such as the Philippine Association of Medical Technologists or PAMET and the Philippine Association of Schools of Medical Technology and Public Health, PASMET, also have their own constitutions and bylaws in accordance with the governing laws and code of ethics. Ensuring confidentiality of patients' information is one of the core duties within the medical practice. Confidentiality requires healthcare providers to keep a patient's personal health information private unless the patient consents to release the information. Because you know what class? Patient records are expected to be kept in confidence by the medical technologist. It is expected that these records containing very important information are protected and made available only when necessary. It is expected that these records containing very important information are protected and made available only when necessary. A medical technologist must be aware at all times of the value of confidentiality and the entirety of the ethical codes of their profession. The only exception to this is when during an operation or in the emergency room where the attending physicians or even the nurses call the laboratory for follow-up from the medical technologist regarding the patient's test results. So sometimes test results are relayed via the telephone so that the doctors can give immediate treatment to the patient. 
A medical technology professional is required to collaborate with other healthcare practitioners in order to build a well-functioning team. Most often, projects fail because people fail to cooperate with others. Collaboration class is the act of working together in order to achieve a desired outcome. Success in the healthcare setting is achieved not because of the availability of highly sophisticated hospital or laboratory equipment, but because of teamwork. A highly trained physician will only be able to efficiently treat his or her patient if laboratory testing, monitoring, drug prescription and dosage, and more are properly rendered and administered by other healthcare professionals. These protocols cannot be done by the physician alone. Having one non-collaborative and incompetent member in the team alone can result in potentially dire repercussions. Practicing medical technologists must also be engaged in research activities to update our skills. Research work, whether experimental or descriptive, can contribute significantly to the discovery of new knowledge in the field of MT and in assessing and revisiting already known ones. It can greatly help in the further development of the field and may be used as future reference for patient care. That's why, as a medical technology student, you will be having your own research um, work also soon. By the way, once you graduate for medical technology and pass the board exams, you may opt to apply a job as a researcher. Who knows, right? Medical technologies should not be confined only to the four corners of their clinical laboratories. Medical technology is a multidisciplinary field which consistently ventures into other areas of health care, including health promotion. A medical technology professional must be actively involved in reaching out to the community. There are actually a lot of ways by which the medical technology profession can help improve the lives of people. In this time of the pandemic, one way to reach the people with regards to health promotion is to post in our Facebook pages the reminders to keep on following safety and health protocols like washing your hands, wearing masks, face shield. Because you know what class? Other healthcare professionals such as the nurses and physicians are easily seen in community outreach programs because of the nature of their professions. Us, medtechs, as vulnerable health care professionals as well, we are also expected to do the same. Here are some of the following ways that medtech professionals can help the community. Number one is to cooperate with other healthcare professionals in health promotion campaigns, such as promoting the ideal attitudes on hygiene, community sanitation, waste segregation, and disease prevention. We can also implement pre-planned programs of health promotion campaigns. As a medical technologist and a professor at the same time, I have done this during our, one of our outreach programs in the outskirts of Cebu. We offer free laboratory testing such as blood typing, urinalysis, fecalysis or stool examination, blood sugar testing, cholesterol testing, and other tests beneficial to the entire community, such as taking the blood pressure of the people from the community. And lastly, collaboration with other healthcare professionals once diagnoses are done. We have been talking a lot about medical technologists. Let us now define the practice of other laboratory personnel. This means that the other people or the other staff, aside from the medical technologist inside the laboratory. The following is a list of other valuable laboratory personnel with various roles in the healthcare delivery system, specifically in the area of laboratory medicine. It is important to note that medical technologists work closely with these laboratory personnel in order to provide accurate and precise laboratory results. Remember class that all of them are interconnected. So it is important that all should work in harmony in order to provide 
the best patient care. The clinical laboratory employs a large number of personnel whose qualifications vary with their job descriptions. Most laboratory personnel are required to be certified or undergo licensure examination conducted by a credentialing organization. Let's start first with the head of the clinical laboratory. A pathologist, as defined by RA5527, is a duly registered physician who is specially trained in methods of laboratory medicine or the gross and microscopic study and interpretation of tissues, secretion and excretions of the human body and its functions in order to diagnose disease, follow its course, determine the effectivity of treatment, ascertain the cause of death, and advance medicine by means of research. Kindly write this down. There are three types of pathologists in a medical laboratory setup according to their specialty. One is a clinical pathologist. The other one is the anatomic pathologist. And the last one is combined anatomic and clinical pathologist. A clinical pathologist oversees the blood banking, hematology, microbiology, clinical chemistry, immunology and serology, and clinical microscopy sections of the laboratory, while an anatomic pathologist performs autopsy, fine needle aspiration, biopsy, and oversees the histopathology section of the laboratory. Specifically, a pathologist heads the clinical laboratory and its subsections and special areas. If medical technologists have a confusion, we can always verify and relay our results to the pathologist so that they can recheck them if ever all the test results that we have released or we will be releasing are correct. Once the pathologist verifies the accuracy, he or she indicates his or her signature in all laboratory results that are released by us, the laboratory professionals working inside that clinical laboratory. Academic and Certification Requirements for Pathologists After finishing the required four years of medical school and passing the medical board exam, Pathologists undergo a four-year residency training program accredited by the Philippine Society of Pathologists before they are eligible to take the board certification examinations. Many pathologists also undertake additional training in subspecialty of pathology. Trivia Did you know that Dr. Marie Emeline B. Yu, our college dean of the Department of Medical Technology in College of Allied Medical Sciences, is a pathologist? Next are the medical laboratory technicians. As defined by Republic Act 5527, Medical laboratory technicians are persons certified and registered with the Board of Medical Technology as qualified to assist a medical technologist and or a qualified pathologist in the practice of medical technology. There are certain qualifications in order for a staff to become a medical technician provided that he or she satisfies these qualifications. Number one, Failed to pass the medical technology licensure examination given by the Board of Medical Technology but still obtained a general rating of at least 70% and provided finally that a registered medical laboratory technician when employed in the government shall have the equivalent civil service eligibility not lower than the second grade. He or she passed the civil service examination for medical technicians given on March 21, 1969 or finished a two-year college course and has at least one year experience of working as a medical laboratory technician provided that for every year of experience in college, two years of work experience may be substituted and provided further that the applicant has at least 
10 years of experience as medical laboratory technician as the date of approval of this decree. Medical laboratory technicians have many similar responsibilities to medical technologists, but because they have lower level of professional credentials, they perform laboratory testing under the supervision of a medical technologist. The duty of medical laboratory technicians focus on performing pre-analytical and post-analytical procedures such as collecting and processing specimens, recording, and releasing of results. The next one is a phlebotomist. He or she is a laboratory professional trained to collect blood sample in a clinical environment. They usually work under the supervision of the medical technologist. Because they collect blood and are at risk of exposure to a variety of diseases, phlebotomists are trained in laboratory safety and must adhere to very strict policies and procedures. To be successful in this profession, an individual must enjoy working with people. They should work well under pressure, be attentive to detail, and have excellent manual dexterity. Nowadays, phlebotomy is a skill confined not only to medical technologists, but to other healthcare practitioners as well, provided that they were given certification by a reputed certifying or training body. Another consideration that must be taken into account is how uneasy most people are around needles and blood. We all know that. Even me, as a medical technologist, I'm still afraid of needles. So this requires a phlebotomist to be able to calm patients and be an effective communicator and a good listener. Due to recent technological advances, a phlebotomist must also be able to use a computer as well as other high-tech devices. Nurse assistants, medical assistants, and other allied health degree graduates are often selected to receive on-the-job training to become a phlebotomist. Academic and certification requirements for phlebotomist. They should complete either an on-the-job training or a formal phlebotomy program, which typically lasts from 3 to 10 months. National certification as a phlebotomist is also available from TESDA. Also, colleges and universities offering degree programs in medical technology include phlebotomy in their curriculum. The next one is a cytotechnologist. He or she is a laboratory personnel who works with a pathologist to detect changes in body cells, which may be important in the early diagnosis of disease. This is primarily done by examining microscopic slides of body cells for abnormalities or anomalies in structures, indicating either benign or malignant conditions. A cytotechnologist selects and sections minute particles of human tissue for microscopic study using microtomes and other equipment and employs stain techniques to make cell structures visible or to differentiate its parts. The Papa Nicolau test and the HNE are the most commonly employed staining techniques. You will know more about this soon in your histopathology subject. Still, the professor would be me, and I will be teaching you techniques and procedures in histopathology. In order for you guys to remember this easily and correctly, when you say cyto, that means cells. So this means that a cytotechnologist is a person or a technologist or a technician that detects changes in body cells by sectioning minute particles for microscopic study. A histotechnologist, also referred to as a histotechnician, is a laboratory personnel responsible for the routine preparation processing and staining of biopsies and tissue specimens for microscopic examination by a pathologist. So place this in your mind class. When you say histo, histo means tissues. So when you say histotechnologist, so these are a technologist or technicians responsible to process tissues for microscopic study 
to be examined by a pathologist. Although there is no formal training for histotechnologists in the Philippines, being a histotechnologist is perceived to be a decent paramedical profession abroad. In the U.S., one can complete a histotechnician program accredited by the National Accrediting Agency for Clinical Laboratory Science. This program usually takes a year to complete and cover courses in chemistry, histology, immunology, biochemistry, and medical ethics. Specifically, a histotechnologist processes tissues removed during surgery. The tissue is cut into very thin slices, mounted on slides, and stained with special dyes to make the tissue or cell details visible under the microscope. The tissue section is then examined by the pathologist and released to the attending physician who will decide the best course of treatment for the patient. Unlike medical technologists from clinical sections of the laboratory who signs results forms, histotechnologists are not allowed to sign laboratory results released from the histopathology section of the laboratory. Only the pathologist who performs the microscopic examination is allowed to sign reports released such as biopsy, autopsy, cell cytology, and pap smear. Another one is a nuclear medical technologist. A nuclear medical technologist is a healthcare professional who works alongside nuclear physicians. Nuclear medical technologists apply their knowledge of radiation physics and safety regulations to limit radiation exposure, prepare and administer radiopharmaceuticals, and use radiation detection devices and other kinds of laboratory equipment that measure the quantity and distribution of radionuclides deposited in the patient or in the patient's specimen. But right now, basing from what I have learned, Radiologic technologists perform all these duties already. So as a medical technologist, what we do is to administer radiopharmaceuticals. But otherwise, they also have their own phlebotomy course in red tech. Last but not the least, it's toxicologist. A toxicologist studies the effects of toxic substances on the physiological functions of human beings, animals, and plants to develop data for use in consumer protection and industrial safety programs. He or she also designs and conducts studies to determine physiological effects of various substances on laboratory animals, plants, and human tissue using biological and biochemical techniques. So kindly take a look at this picture, a day in the life of a forensic toxicologist. That is it for our discussion defining the practice of the medical technology profession. But before I end, I would like you to read this short verse from 1 Timothy verse 4 chapter 12 and reflect on it. Don't be afraid and continue to study for your examinations. Thank you so much for listening and don't forget to like and subscribe this video. God bless you always and have a great day.
Hotel. 